It's one of the really great things about the, the industry. There are a lot of people out there that want to help and are really great at giving advice. Just being a part of that environment, you can't help but absorb everything that you're, you're watching and hearing. It's hard for that not to kind of be contagious and you to kind of uh, want to be that next generation of kind of filmmaker. So I started in the industry as a production runner. Uh, I was very lucky. So I'd finished university uh, studying a media degree at Macquarie. My first real running job was with Dance Academy, which was a production being shot, I think it was around 2009, which to this day I put down as being one of the most influential jobs I've, I've done in so far as all the relationships and people that have kind of forged my career since I kind of met on that job. On one of the seasons of Dance Academy, I put my hand up to be an AD after seeing ADs do their thing and learning what it was that they did to uh, make a production work. And so I was very um, grateful and lucky that uh, Joe Werner and Ali Henville, who were kind of running that ship as a producer and line producer, gave me a leg up and trained me up to be an AD. So once I found my footing as an AD, uh, a lot of it was just down to getting as much work and experience as, uh, as I could. As a, uh, a third assistant director, I was doing shows like Dance Academy, uh, a few seasons of A Place to Call Home, Janet King, uh, there was House Husbands in there, uh, a few series of Love Child. Progressing forward as a second, kind of more feature film. So I did a feature film called Down River, The Whistleblower, which was shot down in Melbourne. Uh, just recently I was the uh, base second second for the new Mortal Kombat film. Currently working on the new Marvel series, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten, Ten Rings. So I feel like I did have an inkling as to knowing that I wanted to be a director to some point, but again, until I was kind of in the industry uh, and learning what it is that directors actually did, um, along with all the other departments, I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do until I really saw it. Uh, be done well by the people I was working with. We can bring you into the Order of St Agnes to learn our ways. So it's interesting when you have been performing a role for so long and you do decide to kind of make the jump up or sideways or whatever it is to a different position. So for myself it was ADing for, you know, going on 10 years before I uh, landed my first kind of network directing role. Um, so there is that risk of kind of being pigeonholed into a position. Personally, ADing was such a, a strong element to being able to direct, knowing how to kind of control a set and run a set and work with all the different departments. Um, building those relationships and everything else is so much a part of directing anyway that it kind of went hand in hand in it. Such an opportunity. Alice Willison and Justine Flynn, they were shaping together this show, The Unlisted. Justine and I had worked together on a project 12 years prior to that. I was a production runner, kept in touch over 10 years. Once Justine had kind of heard that I'd been climbing the ladder as an AD and uh, getting a bit of directing work here and there, I believe her and Alice kind of sold me to the rest of the production team, which worked out amazingly because producer Angie Fielder, again, I'd worked with 10 years prior on a job called Burning Man. It was daunting because I'd never directed anything that big. It was not daunting in the scale of it, but daunting in so far as uh, the buck kind of stopped with me and my decision mattered a lot more than it might have in previous positions. So my skills as an AD definitely helped me run a set and, and control the, uh, the environment that I was trying to achieve. Hi. What are you doing? Look, I know the transition might always seem like it is really hard, and that's because it is. <laughs> you know, when you're getting to that point, there's not, oh, I guess there's probably 10 directors for every show being made. So you are kind of battling a lot of other people and a lot of people who are way, way more experienced than you'll ever be. If I were to offer any advice to kind of make that transition, I think a really great way to do it is to reach out to directors that you do admire the work of and see if you can do attachment ships or you know assistance. A lot of those opportunities do lead into bigger things. Just coming up through the ranks and doing your time and earning your stripes, building those genuine relationships with people is far and away the biggest piece of uh, advice that I can give to anyone. It's, uh, it's really, really important to look to those people that are making the productions that you want to be a part of 
and, uh, and learning from them because all that information you might not even realise you're storing but when you do get to that point of directing or writing or producing or whatever, whatever it is that you want to end up doing, um, that experience will come flowing out of you and you won't even realise it. So absorb and, uh, and just learn from the greats that you're working with. What else? So ultimately I'd love to kind of see myself down the line directing a lot more obviously in kind of bigger productions. Um, I'm working on a few productions of my own. I like the sound of kind of owning a production company and helping elevate a lot of other people to, uh, to make their stories a reality as well and share their voice and, and their stories to the masses. So yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm projecting myself. But uh, I don't know, watch this space, I guess.